Hello, hello, Robert here. Hello, hello Robert, it's Dan, Dan Mace. Hi there, Dan. Hi, good to see you. Thank you, thank you very much for getting back to me. Uh, no problem at all, no uh, problem at all. Right. Uh, looking at your book, Enjoy Life Forever, there's a couple of things that I'm sort of puzzled about. Um, one okay. of them would be what I think I've mentioned briefly in chapter 15, the claim that Jesus resurrected as a spirit. Um, I find that a bit puzzling. Um, I mean, why was the stone rolled away from the entrance to the tomb by the angel, for a start? Um, if Jesus rose as a spirit, he could have just floated through the stone. There's no need for the angel to roll the stone back. Um, but it says in Mark 16, 4, But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. Well, why bother? If he rose as a spirit, he could have just floated through it. Well, he could have done, yeah, he could have done, but um, that's not what the, uh, what the scriptures tell us. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, a, well... It's, in my view, it's a, sort of a small, small thing, really. That they, they were there; they had fleshly bodies, so they, uh, they they observed this happening. Sorry, I don't understand your answer. Okay, okay. Can I can, can we just get to know one another first before I sort of answer some of your questions? Yes, yes, okay? sure. Yes, yes. My name is yeah, Robert. You, I mean, Robert so Skinner. How did you? Obviously, you're in. You're obviously in chapter sort of quite way through the book. Where, how did you? Which, how did you get hold of a copy of the book? Are you looking on the website, or did you get a physical copy? I, I downloaded a copy as soon as it was released from the website. I've been on the website okay. for many years. Um, okay. Uh, and then I actually did speak to somebody about it, and they sent me a copy, but they kind of sent it to me anonymously. I would have sent them something for the postage, and uh, five pounds for the postage in the book, but um, okay. it was a, they sent it anonymously. Uh, which right. was a bit shocking. I thought they would have said, you know, all the best from whoever it was, and I could have written them back and paid at least paid yeah. for the postage or something. But did you? Did you? Um, so you, you looked on the website, but someone actually sent you a copy as well. Yes, somebody somebody sent me a copy. Yeah, it was sent from Southampton. Uh, from who in Southampton? I honestly don't know. Oh, okay. Do you live? Do you live in that area then? Do you live in Southampton or? Um, um, no, I, I I live more towards Plymouth. Okay. How did you get my How did you get my number? Would you Would you mind me asking? Because we, we are sort of quite a way away from each other, really. Well, JW dot org. Find a meeting. You had a mobile yeah. phone number. I've, I've yeah. I have written. I have phoned landline numbers, and no one seems to get back to you. Perhaps that was the. Uh, the number of the guy in Southampton. Perhaps I'd left my details on his phone, and he yeah. just sent me the book, and that was it. I never heard from him since. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, used to be. I'm, I'm more than happy to talk to you, but obviously yes. we're, we're quite some way away, and, and um, you know, someone might be able to sort of come and talk to you face to face rather than sort of doing it on the on the telephone. Uh, um, I don't want people to visit me in my home. Yeah, okay. No, that's, that's fair enough. I'm, yeah, a that's, former, that's fair enough. I'm a former oneness Pentecostal. I got involved in the oneness movement back in the 1980s, the late 1980s. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, so you're quite a religious person yourself. I don't go to church any anymore now. I certainly have a faith in Christ. But um, yeah. joining the oneness yeah. was the making of me um, because it taught me to think for myself. I was only in it for just under a year. And I left, right. you know, giving them Bible reasons why I thought that what they were teaching was completely um, uh, wrong. And boy, were they nasty to me. Really nasty. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that's, just, that's a shame. You don't want to be anybody, you don't want to be uh, in connection with anybody that's going to be nasty to you, do you? Not at all. Not if they're uh, supposedly sort of representing Jesus Christ and God, then, uh, yeah, we don't want anybody being nasty to anybody. Yeah. Okay. I mean that that sort of so that first sort of first question. So let me let mm -hmm. me find the scripture that you're talking about, and I'll have a look at the verse myself. Yeah. Sure. So it was, it was in Mark. Mark sixteen, verse four. But when they looked yeah. up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, 
for it was very large. Yes, yes. So the angel who was inside the tomb would have rolled the stone away. Well, why bother doing that? If Jesus rose as a spirit, he could have just floated out of the tomb through the stone because he's a spirit. He's yeah. not going to be held by a piece of stone. So why bother rolling yeah. it back? Yeah, that, well, that's, that's a very good point. Yeah. Um, yeah, why do it? I mean, it was, it was obviously it was a, a visible representation that he had been raised when they visited the tomb the next day, and early the next day, wasn't it? So they could see very clearly that this massive stone that had taken a few of them to roll in place previously had been rolled away. So, um, yeah, you're right. I mean, it didn't, it, it, didn't, it didn't need to be rolled away. No, it's true. Your book, Enjoy Life Forever, on page 63, uh, Lesson 15, Paragraph 3, says that Jesus was resurrected as a spirit. It says, after Jesus' life as a human ended, he was resurrected as a spirit and he returned to heaven. Now, I didn't see any evidence in the Bible that Jesus was resurrected as a spirit. He kept showing people his hands and his feet repeatedly post-resurrection. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and he says that he's in a body of flesh and bones. In Luke twenty four thirty nine, Behold my hands and my feet, right, because they had the marks of crucifixion in them, that it is I myself, yeah. so this is not a manifestation of Jesus, it's Jesus himself. Handle me and see, well he says handle me, so they can feel the marks of crucifixion. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. So Jesus appeared yeah. before them in a body of flesh and bones, Luke twenty four yeah. thirty nine. Yeah. So he wasn't, he didn't resurrect as a spirit, he resurrected in the same body that he died in. And he kept showing them his hands and his feet. Verse 40, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. John twenty twenty six to 27 says the same thing. He's, he's constantly showing people his hands and his feet. Why? Because yeah. they bear the marks of crucifixion. Okay, so yeah. what? what's the significance of that? Well, obviously, he's risen in the same body that was on the tree that, that was crucified. That's why the body he's resurrected in, albeit it's a glorified human body, it bears the marks of crucifixion because it's the same body. He didn't resurrect yeah. as a spirit. I, I find that very, 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 very difficult. Okay, Robert. So do you? So you do you? You don't. You don't believe that Jesus is is a spirit creature now. Do you? What? How do you believe from from that moment when he was resurrected? Do you believe he's got still got a physical body? Well, you said several things there. You said spirit creature, which I can't really answer that question until you define what a spirit creature is. Um, I believe the standard position held by Protestants, Catholics and Eastern Orthodox that Jesus died and that he rose again in the very same body that he died in. Right. OK. OK. All right. Um, I, I need to do some research. Mm -hmm. Um, quite naturally, I'm not going. I'm not going to talk off the top of the head. That, mm -hmm. wouldn't, that wouldn't be fair. Um, so, w would it be okay for me to give you my email address? No. And then, then you can. No. Uh, uh, just. No, absolutely, I refuse. I don't want text. I don't want links. I don't want copy and paste. I'm okay. happy to talk to people. But I, yeah. I, if, if, I'm not going to allow you to give me a reading list of stuff I'm supposed to go through. You can, no, no, you can no, no, either... I won't do that. I won't do that. I won't, I won't do that, Robert. I won't do that. But to be, to be fair, you're talking to me cold this morning. Um, this yeah. is a subject I've not done a great deal of research get into. Get back to me, yeah. Yeah, it's up. so I would like to get back to you, but I need to be able to take enough notes now. I mean, you've, you've, yeah. um, you've obviously done a lot of research yourself, quite naturally, yeah. because it's something that interests you and is on your mind. Um so I need to get enough information down. For, now, for me, the best way to do that is via email. And I promise I won't give you a long leading, reading list. I will, if you put your points down, I will do some research and I will refer to those um, particular points. I won't send you off and say, look, read this, read that, read this, read that. I will respond to each question. If I can't respond to a question, I will tell you I can't respond to a question. But at least that then gives me time it gives you time to put your point across well and, you know, so you're happy with it. It gives me time to read it, to understand.
understand your point and then to do some research and reply to that um, rather than just talk off my head or try and make notes as you're going through the scriptures and making your you know your point so that that would be the ideal for me should you then get a reply to me you're not happy with then please tell me that and then we'll work out how we go from there um, I can I can write down in in text um, the verses if you would like me to do that. I would I would like you to do that, please. Um, that, would, that would be helpful. I'm speaking to you on the phone now. I'm not very good at phones. How do I send you a text while I'm speaking to you on the phone? Oh, send a message. Um, yeah, well, you don't necessarily need to do it while we're still on the phone. Um, when we when we when we finish when we hang up. You've got my number because we, we were texting this morning. So just just you can just add another text. So when, when you said, um, could you give me a time, please, just go to that message and then you can add. Uh, there you go. Yeah, that's it. So you've got you've got some you've got some scriptures there. But just just um, just give me a bit of an explanation as to your your view out of what of how we differ. So you said you've given me um, a chapter in the you know the chapter and a particular point in the um enjoy life forever book so just put those things down as well but if you could do it in a text because you're sending me individual verses at the moment i just want to i just want to see how they link up if you know what i mean um well, i'm happy to speak to you i can i can explain sometime how they link up but i'm certainly not writing a three four thousand word essay i hate no, not, i hate I'm, texting I'm not, i hate that yeah. i can't stand it you know, I've given yeah. you three verses, Luke uh, 24, 39, yeah. uh, John 2, 19 to 21, where Jesus says yeah. he's going to resurrect in the same body he died in. Mark 16, yeah. 4, the stone was rolled away. There's also John 20, 27, where um, Jesus uh, says, t Thomas asks Jesus, he speaks to Jesus, and Jesus says yeah. to Thomas, look at my hands and my feet, because they, they bear the marks of crucifixion. Yeah. Um, I mean, the position I'm, uh, I'm, I'm advocating isn't some weird position. It's the position held by all Christians for 2,000 years. If you disagree yeah. with that, I mean, you, should, yeah. you yeah. should know what is the orthodox position. You know, um, I mean, if you say you're a football fan and you've never heard of Real Madrid... And you want me to write you an essay about what Real Madrid is? Well, I'm just not going to do it. I mean, you sh if you if you're a person who's dedicated your life to football, and you're a football fan, football obsessed, you should know what Real Madrid is. I don't have to explain it to you. There's something wrong if you don't know what Real Madrid is. In the same way, yeah. if you believe in the Bible and you believe in Jesus, you should be able to know, even if you don't agree with it with what is the standard christian position protestant catholic eastern orthodox on say yeah. the nature of god which is called trinity or on christ's yeah. resurrection that he rose in the same body that he died in and if you don't know yeah. that i'm not i'm not here to explain that to you no 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 absolutely not but i i don't believe for me to find the truth about God, I need to check out every single religion in the world. I need to read the Bible and see which one matches up with what the Bible says. And I feel yeah, 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 that but, I, I, I've done that. Yeah, just a second. Look, if you're a football fan and you don't know what Real Madrid is, you don't know what a goal is, you don't know I what don't a know penalty right is. Now, Madrid are. You you understand if you don't know what a goal is, if you don't know what a penalty is, if you don't know what a referee is, if you don't know what a striker is, if you don't know what a pass is, it's very difficult yeah. to have a discussion with you about football if you don't know the most basic elements of football. Yeah. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong. If oh, you wish to discuss, it doesn't matter that it's right or wrong. No, if, hold, if uh, let, me, a, let me, let me, if you, if let me. You, go, you, you cut me off. I wasn't able to finish. Start saying, "Well, that's a handball, and this is a ha this is not a handball." Then, of course, it's it neat matters if it's right or wrong. You you cut me off. I wasn't able to finish. It doesn't matter in any field, really. You go, you have to stand back. You have to know what the orthodox position is in any field whether it's football or karate or or poetry or 
knitting, you know, it doesn't matter what thing you do in life, what your hobby in life is. It could be playing the piano or playing the guitar. Um, you, you should be able to understand what the basic orthodox position is. And if you don't know that, it's almost impossible to have a conversation with you. Robert, can I, can I ask you um, an honest question? But would yeah. you please give me an honest answer? Yeah. What is the purpose of this call? Is it to try and get answers to your question? Or is it to try and change my beliefs? I'm trying to get answers to the question that Jesus was resurrected as a spirit. If you don't know what, the position I'm saying, of course theology matters, of course obeying the Bible matters. But in one sense, you have to understand what the orthodox position is. If you're going to disagree with it, you surely have to understand what the orthodox position is. And you have to be able to understand it accurately and be able to deal with it fairly and honestly, not use ridiculous straw man arguments against it. Now, if it's wrong, if Jesus did resurrect as a spirit, I'd like to see that proven from the Bible. Yeah, of course. But it, it's going to be almost impossible that's... to dialogue if you don't even know that there is an orthodox position and that for 2,000 years, as far as I know, all, all Protestants, all Catholics and all Eastern Orthodox have all agreed that Jesus rose in the very same body that he died in. This isn't some weird, ridiculous view that only I hold because I'm some weird person. This is what everyone's held in church history. Athanasius, Tertullian, St. Augustine, Wycliffe, Huss, Luther, um, John Wesley, C.H. Spurgeon, uh, the great Greek grammarians of the 20th century, um, Manti, Robertson, Lenski. They, they all say the same thing. Now, if they're all wrong... I'd like to see it. But when I read after Jesus' life as a human ended, he was resurrected as a spirit and he returned to heaven. There's no verse to back that up. And I can't yeah. think of any verse in the Bible that actually says that. It's, it's just a yeah. statement without any scriptural support. So, Robert, you obviously, you obviously got a long way into the book. Was there, was there not points before this that raised concerns for you? Um, well... In chapter 7, I would see the Holy Spirit as personal, not impersonal. But I would prefer just to look at one single thing at a time, not, not multiple thing, things together. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we, I, I think I've got enough information. So, um, mm. as we said, uh, you've sent me the verses. I'll look at the verses. I'll, uh, I'll find some verses which um, back up what I believe. And um, then we'll have another conversation, Nicholas. Okay? Yes. OK, I can speak any day except for Monday. Just make sure you text me plenty of time in advance. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. All right, good to speak to you, Robert. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.